Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman presented the Union Budget 2019-20, evoking mixed reactions from industry and citizens. While startups and infrastructure companies rejoice, what does Modi 2.0 budget hold for industry and the economy? Captains of Corporate India converged at Fiki, New Delhi to decode Budget 2019 with CNBC TV18. It's a budget which gives directionality. It lays out the roadmap for India to become a $5 trillion economy by 2024. It also introduces some uh, new thoughts in the government, uh, particularly of disinvestment and divestment. Uh, it's for the first time that I heard uh, a finance minister saying that the government can go below for 51% in a central government PSU, as well as they are looking at exiting certain, certain areas, for example, like Air India. So that's a welcome and a fresh thought. Also, uh, the continued thrust on infrastructure, whether it's road, uh, Bharat Mala ports, uh, Sagar Mala through rural road construction, through uh, rural housing development, through urban housing uh, development, low cost. I think these are all welcome steps to help improve the 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 uh, you know the life of its citizens, particularly at the lower end of the spectrum. Hello and welcome to Decoding Budget 2019 in association with FIKI on CNBC TV 18. Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman has delivered her maiden budget. Some of the big ticket announcements made in Budget 2019 include the disinvestment target for PSUs being revised to 1,5,000 crore rupees from the interim budget target of 90,000 crore rupees, a 70,000 crore rupees bank recapitalization package for public sector banks, easing of angel tax and other issues for startups, streamlining labor reforms into four labor codes in the future, and high taxes for the super rich. So to discuss some of these big ticket announcements and lots more, I'm joined by experts here on the show today. Nirmala Sitaraman's maiden budget in parliament. So first, very quick reactions on uh, how would you rate it on a scale of one to five? Five being the highest, Siraj. No, that will be unfair uh, because as far as the agriculture sector is concerned, she hasn't said much about it. So, I think uh, it would be unfair to rate a finance minister. Too early before you read the the fine no, print. No, I have of read it, but uh, <laughs> I, I I think it would be an inappropriate. Okay. Anyone else willing to give a rating to the finance yeah, sure, minister? Sure, I can go yes, ahead. Please. Well, I'm very positive. I would say four out of five. Four out of five. Okay, that's a high score. Doctor Lal Mohan. But she didn't say much about the healthcare yeah. sector, yeah. so I, I will, you know, keep my, uh, the, the, the scoring to myself, but I can talk about the healthcare center when you ask me. Okay. And Mohit? Uh, yeah, but, uh, particularly <coughs> from a corporate law committee and a private equity venture capital committee, if I look at it, then probably I'll give it three and a half out of, three five. And a half out of five. But if I, give it, if I look at the entire budget, right. I would say, I would still give it around four because I think okay. it's a good budget. Okay, so for the gentlemen who are giving the budget a four, let me start uh, with you, sure. Devin. Uh, clearly, renewable energy getting a big push yeah. there, and that's perhaps one of the big reasons why you give uh, a four out of five Absolutely. to the government. Absolutely. Yes. So yes, it's been very positive for renewables, and in fact, uh, they've also announced waste to energy projects at the village level, which is extremely important. Uh, with reduction in duties in EV, uh, this is positive. And actually, you've got to look at the whole positiveness from also the environment. Right. So more and more renewable energy is encouraged. The environment becomes better. The healthcare bill comes down. The quality of life improves. And that will certainly give more employment, generate more employment. And as we go more rural, that will become, that will give indirect benefit to the farmers as well. Right. Because somewhere the land will be used. Right. Uh, so, on that front, very positive. Labor laws also, I think, very positive. I don't know what the four codes are. Right. Uh, if they come, perhaps we can bring back uh, lost jobs which have gone to ASEAN countries back to India, hmm. especially in garment exports, okay. which is a big uh, uh, generator for employment. And, uh, of course, uh, uh, you know, government going and borrowing overseas, again, I think is positive right. because that will put in more cash into the economy. Uh, maybe perhaps into 70,000 crores coming to banks is again positive. Right. So all this for me, I think is very positive, will definitely lead to growth. Okay. Definitely what we now need to see is how much of this gets transformed into 
industry generating jobs. Right. Okay. And Rajiv, on the corporate tax uh, front, from 250 crores to including companies up to 400 crores uh, of turnover, some are saying that's too little, too less at this point in time. Much more was expected. What's your view? Well, I look at it that this was a trend and they are keeping to the trend. Now, we can always argue should it be 500, could have been 500. 500 or whatever. But so long as you're moving in the direction in which you had promised and is the expectation, mm. I think that in itself is a, is a good thing. Uh, we all have seen that there is an attempt to, I mean, there is a requirement to increase the tax to GDP ratio. So expecting too many giveaways uh, it, it should not be a real expectation. Right. But so long as the trend of rationalization, uh, I would rather wonder w w why nothing was said about uh, MAT and other things. But right. 250, 400, why not 350, why not 550? We can all debate that. Right. But I think that as a trend is encouraging. Okay. Siraj, uh, like you said in, the, in your initial statement, there's been no real talk of agriculture and what the government plans to do, no real talk of the outlay or anything like that. So are you disappointed at this point in time? No, I would not say I am disappointed. but. Uh in the BJP manifesto, there was a promise that 25 lakh crores will be invested in rural and agri sector over the next five years. So at least I wanted a roadmap to be indicated how this money will be raised yeah. and what are the kind of sectors in which uh, investment will come. Secondly, uh, large parts of India are reeling under crisis of water. So even though a new ministry has been formed by amalgamating some of the existing departments, uh, but there is no uh, real discussion or roadmap. They, they did speak of some uh, water grid blueprint that they were working no, on. No, there is nothing about changing the cropping pattern. As he mentioned, you know, this is the first year of a government with full mandate. So you can take hard decisions. These yeah. decisions will be increasingly difficult to take as we move towards the next election. Right. So, for example, will we continue with growing sugar cane in water stressed regions of Maharashtra? Will we continue to grow paddy in absolutely water-starved regions of Punjab? Right. Now, these are the, some of the things which I wanted to see in the budget speech. Okay, all right. Dr. Lal, again, uh, healthcare was a sector that was clearly missed out uh, in the budget at this point in time. What were you expecting and uh, the big miss that you think the budget had for yeah. healthcare sector? It's a mixed bag as far as I am concerned. So what I have heard today, because she did not mention any figures right there, so what, what I hear is it's 63,500 crores, which is a marginal increase of about 13.5%, you know, over the previous year. This was already in the interim budget. But had it been more, say, 25%, right. we would have reached towards that kind of a mark, what the government itself has been saying, that we'll be able to spend 2.5% of the GDP. The government is spending hardly 1% right, right now. Yeah. So all that would have happened well directionally, but I don't have to, you know, criticize for the sake of criticizing. Yeah. But then the, 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 the scheme which they have announced, ABPMJ, is the biggest health scheme in the world. Mm. And for that, you need to dig out the money from somewhere. So the good part is that there is a 166% increase in the, in the Ayushman Bharat scheme, which has now been given 6,500 crores. So that's right. a good part. So right. Something is good. But at the NHM level, which is primary health care, which interests people like us, because if you don't look after the primary health care, which is the health and wellness uh, centers, 1,50,000 of them, there's hardly an increase of about 7%. Right. So directionally, yes, they're moving forward, but will they be able to achieve their, uh, I would say, disinvestment of 2.5% of GDP in health care? That doesn't seem to be happening. Okay. All right, that doesn't seem to be happening for sure. Uh, Mohit, uh, easing of angel tax norms that has already started uh, uh, about a week back, about 10 days back, uh, which, which has been good for startups in India. Also, uh, giving a boost to startups in, uh, with respect to IT scrutiny and saying that there will be no income tax scrutiny if you are raising funds or, and you do not have to uh, disclose your value to category to uh, uh, you know investors so all of that good for startup india on the whole I, if you think about it i think everybody including the economic survey yesterday mentioned that investments have to improve significantly yes and that needs to move up if we have to get to 5 trillion dollars mm -hmm. and if you look at the numbers on private equity and venture capital the investment in last quarter is down almost 30% year on year yeah and therefore, I think a lot of things needed to be done. 
to make sure that because really uh, traditional capital is not supporting growth and job creation and therefore the enabling environment for private equity and venture capital had to be created right. and there were a lot of issues being discussed level playing field because i think last budget they talked about onshoring of fund managers mm. and then income tax authorities had come up and made conditions which are impossible and sebi has a condition where you have a uh, like broad based fund right. that budget that definition could have been introduced in the income tax therefore a lot of fund manager would have based in india and therefore they would have employed more time and they would have actually created more job that was one important issue mm. again the other issue was that really if you are if you are a fund manager and you are supply you are giving services to fund and you are based in india then you suffer gst yeah. but if you are a fund manager outside there is no sufferance so there is a lot of non level playing field again if you look at the nbfc crisis mm. a lot of these tier 2 tier 3 co corporates in india are not able to raise money and if you look at our our foreign exchange regulation that if 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 corporates are able to raise money with sbi plr plus 500 basis point then the withholding tax is only 5% but if they are paying more higher than the 500 basis point then the withholding tax is 15% mm. so the tier 2 tier 3 corporates were not able to raise money because the withholding tax was additionally 10% right. and i thought that that level playing field would have been brought in Okay all right thank you very much gentlemen thank for joining you. us on CNBC TV 18 we'll head into a short break right now on the other side of the break we'll continue to decode budget 2019 right here on CNBC TV 18 Welcome back to Decoding Budget 2019 in association with Fiki exclusively on CNBC TV 18. In this segment I'm joined by another set of experts who will decode Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman's maiden budget for us today. Let me uh, begin by asking you Archana uh, there's been some thrust on uh, rural women in particular in this budget uh, an overdraft of about 5000 rupees being allowed for women members who have jandhan accounts women members of self help groups great move would you say i think it's a fantastic move and this is something we have been recommending to the government to create rural entrepreneurship mm. this is essentially microcredit and as we well know microcredit transform bangladesh yeah. where uh, women set up small businesses and women spending money meant that you got a double dividend right they spend more on the children's education and health So today Bangladesh's quality of life indicators are better than India hmm. though its per capita income is less. Right. So this is actually a major step by the government. You will be impacting crores of women who will get this money which will help them set up small businesses. All right. Uh, Manish on the white goods front electronic goods front not much that we saw in the budget except import duty has gone up on uh, split ACs uh, so surely consumers not going to be happy about that. Yeah so your first reactions so i would say mixed feelings uh, from one perspective i think uh, today's announcements are going to be very transformational mm -hmm. so in the history when we will look back after 5 or 6 years we will realize that today we wrote the future for electric mobility to expand in the country right. so that's fantastic news right. she spoke about carbon footprint i think we are at the cusp of creating a game change uh if you look at the announcements i think they are very well designed very strategically thought of starting from how do you sort of create cost competitiveness how do you create the ecosystem incentivize the ecosystem enable it to roll out at a faster efficiency better efficiencies mm -hmm. and also motivation to the end consumer in forms of relaxation on income tax uh, uh, when you take loan to buy electric vehicle uh, gst slabs are reduced So I believe uh, that's fantastic news mm. when we look at uh, uh, rub off to happen for the electronics industry in the country. Right. Uh, capital goods are exempted from duty. So much has happened today. When it comes to consumer durable industry, I believe we were looking forward to today's announcements in the backdrop of uh, not so good time which has gone past in last couple of years, yeah. specifically from the point of view of uh, uh, demand expansion. And uh, basic expectations were that uh, one was expecting uh, lower. Uh, duties on components uh, open cell in specific for televisions and uh, still we'll keep hope with the gst council uh, for sort of making the products more affordable because no longer we believe that televisions or air conditioners fall in the luxury category they are a necessity already right 
Vikram, again, agriculture, a sort of a big miss in this budget. Yes. We didn't see any uh, path-breaking, game-changing policies out there for the rural yeah. farmer, did we? Yeah, agriculture, although there was, if, if we pick up some of the threads around FM speech about, uh, she talked about the, agri the farmer to be, the poor farmer to be the focus and nucleus. She talked about the housing, the rural infrastructure, highways. She did talk about a self-sufficiency in the pulses in few past few years. Mm. And she said it is our endeavor that India becomes self-sufficient in the oil seeds, right. where our import right. bill can be reduced, uh, and so on and so forth. But of course, there was no mention of MSP, because in the last budget, the main driving force of the budget was the minimum support price, which government had guaranteed to the farmers. We do hope, although it will be known in the fine prints, we do hope that this MSP program continues where government is assuring the cost plus basis remuneration right. to buy back the produce. And there was no mention on the agriculture and fertilizer subsidies. We do hope that uh, they continue as it is and they have not been reduced in the quantum. And uh, although there was a mention of DBT and we also hope that there will be more direct beneficiary transfer of these uh, subsidies. All right. And on the defense front, uh, Webhav, given that uh, national security was uh, one of this government's, uh, you know, uh, big ticket focus areas before the elections, not much was done about it in the budget. Uh, very marginal increase on defense expenditure. How are we going to modernize all those, uh, you know, defense parts that they spoke about before the elections? Yeah, I do agree with that. And we are really looking forward to the fine print, how much uh, capital allocation will be given uh, in the defense budget because that is how the industry really you know moves and uh, that is where the all the manufacturing and R&D really happens and uh, we are also wanting to uh, understand how the government wants to you know imp uh, improve the internal security mm -hmm. that is also an area of concern modernization of state police forces as well as central armed police forces and uh, the only uh, announcement which uh, we got to hear during the FM speech was reduction of the import duty on the content which is not being produced, produced in India. India yeah. So I believe that uh, if the, uh, that money can be saved and be you know uh, included in the capital part of the defense budget, it can again you know uh, propel the uh, local defense industry. And Ministry of Defense has done a really marvelous job again uh, during the tenure of the present FM, who yeah. was the yeah. previous uh, defense minister, that they introduced a new category of procurement, which is called the IDDM, which is indigenously designed, developed, and manufactured. And uh, Indian companies are really looking forward hmm. to more uh, participation in the defense uh, manufacturing in India. And also uh, the announcement of two defense corridors last year, yeah. one in UP and one in Tamil Nadu, we would really uh, hope that you know certain part of the budget can be allocated also to to, to, uh, to these two defense corridors right. because they want these two industrial uh, corridors, especially in UP, which will help you know uh, to propel the industry, local industry in UP, and provide employment and also act as a you know uh, infusion of technology will also happen when these two corridors come right. up. Okay, so on a scale of one to five quickly, how would you rate budget 2019, Vikram? About four, and one thing, they also talked about cluster-based development okay. of bamboo and things like yeah. that. So I'll rate three, 3.5. 3.5, Manish? On strategy six, on... On strategy six, out six. of five? One out of five, she said. Out of five. One out of five would be three, and uh, on tactical measures, uh, two. Okay, Archana? I think for women and rural women, I would rate it a five. Okay. But for MSMEs, I think maybe three, three and a half. All right. Weber? I believe uh, overall it will be a four uh, infrastructure uh, fund and uh, then PPP in railway. I think so. These are two good moves to propel the industry. All right. Average to above average. That's the rating all of you are giving to uh, FM Nirmala Sitaraman on her maiden budget. Thank you everyone for joining us here today. Well, that was budget 2019 decoded for you by industry leaders. Most of them rating it as an average to above average budget given the current economic scenario. Thank you for joining us today. News and updates continue on CNBC TV 18. Goodbye.